Hey, thanks for watching. My name is Dr. Michael Pre. I'm a chiropractor at Pre Chiropractic, and today we'll be talking about good old fashioned allergies. Right? So it's about four different types of allergies. Really, you have uh, skin allergies. You have your uh, ingestibles, which is going to be stuff like food allergies. You have your um, inhalation stuff. That's going to be the stuff we breathe in your airs, and also injectables. So medications. Right. So. Uh, and it bleeds over to seasonal allergies and pet allergies and stuff like that. So the one we're talking about today is going to be the seasonal allergies, right? Seasonal allergies uh, go by the season, right? So in the spring, you have all the pollens that come out all over the world. And then also in the fall, a lot of times these, these plant breakdowns break ragweed. And there's a couple of things that happen in the fall. So if you notice that your allergies are just around the spring and the fall, then you are going to have the seasonal allergies. If you have uh, allergies all year long, you may have one of the other types, maybe a food sensitivity or allergy, maybe a medication, maybe something else going on. So, um, for the practice, of, for the purpose of this talk, we're going to be talking about the seasonal allergies. Okay. And so, I got a couple of cool props. You're going to love this. Um, how, how, and exactly what happens is inside the body, whenever you get a little allergy, right? You have something, you breathe in, it stimulates, it, it gets in the body. And it bumps into something called a B cell, all right? Uh, it bumps into it. Your body cell recognizes that that is a bad, that's something bad. There's a, I'm not, I'm not going to bore you with all the names. You would, you would, <clears throat> it, it's not fun anyway to learn all this stuff, but just know that once it gets inside your cell, or once it gets inside your body, a B cell recognizes it as foreign and it alerts through a chemical cascade, this other cell, this mass cell that, hey man, this thing here is bad. This is the allergen. Attaches to a B cell. This tells the B cell to, to tell the mast cell to do some other stuff. And the mast cell is ready. The mast cell is like your army. It's got all the histamines and it's got all the control. It's got all kinds of stuff in there waiting to fight. And so now if you get more of these things in the body and it bumps into a mast cell, the mast cell unloads the army and attacks what's coming in here as the um, as the allergen, right? Okay. And so this guy here unloads everything, and with main one of the main things being histamines. So histamines get released in the body, and that helps you have a help to, to clear up the allergen that comes in through here. Okay. So histamines do have a good part in the body, and what they do is I'm gonna read off a little list of things they do. Uh, when they enter the bloodstream, they increase stomach acid a little bit. They increase the heart rate. Uh, they increase the capillary um, permeability. Uh, it dilates blood vessels, releases a little bit of adrenaline. Um, it restricts the uh, bronchioles, or uh, that's the things inside the, the lungs, right? The, the highways in the lungs, it restricts those. Um, it starts the eyes running and it starts the nose running. You can also get a little swelling and inflammation, right? And so right off the bat, those are actually good things if your body needs to fight something, right? We increase the blood, we increase the permeability going to the tissues so we can uh, we can get our white blood cells there so they can get the immune system involved. Um, if we know we're actually breathing something in that's bad for us, wouldn't it be better to not ingest those things? And so what happens is we increase the stomach acid. So if you do swallow the stuff, it'll kill it. And also, if, it, if you've got uh, mucus running out of your, well, mucus running the back of the throat, now those little pollens and things will bump into the mucus, get caught up, you will swallow it and eliminate it. Same thing. So if we can put a little mucus layer in between your tissues and the outside environment, well now those little pollens and those little allergens will get stuck in the mucus layer. Same thing for the eyes. And so those are, those are good things. Those, those are good reactions at first. But if you have that chronically, that's when it becomes a problem, right? So if those histamine levels stay high for, you know, days and weeks on ends, that's when you got the chronic watery eye, the chronic scratchy throat and things like that. And if you have this inflammation that's in the, the sinus cavities here, or the, or the throat or even the lungs, if you get that long term, you can also get an infection in there. And now things get a little bit worse. So now instead of just having some allergies in your eyes and in the back of the throat, now you have an infection. Now it turns into sinusitis, bacteria living here. You know, now we got uh, same thing, bronchitis, things like that. So those are the bad things as we go along. So it's not that histamines that by themselves, one little push of them are bad for you. It's when they stay chronically high is what's bad for you, right? Um, and so, so how can we help? So the main part of when you're dealing with seasonal allergies is dealing with that histamine response. And there's a couple of different ways we can do that. I'm gonna kind of slip over to the slideshow here. That's the name of this thing, is maintain a healthy immune system 
balancing your histamine response. Okay. Disclaimer, obviously, that um, this is not a, uh, a gap between your medical advice. Everybody's individual. So before you take anything or before you do anything different, definitely talk to your doctor about what's going on specifically with you and your conditions. Um, and that's what we're talking about here. Sometimes the body overreacts. Either you make too much histamine or it stays uh, chronically high. One of the things that can help out, uh, it's called DHQ. Now, my southern dialect, sometimes I can't say all these words, but it's dihydroquercetin. You've probably heard of quercetin. This is its, this is its, yeah, it's, its cousin, I guess to say, DHQ. <clears throat> and this thing will help modulate some of those histamine response. I'm not going to read every single one of them, but uh, basically it protects the erythrocytes, which is red blood cells and capillaries. It supports activities of other antioxidants. A lot of, that, a lot of times these things are synergistic. And that's exactly what we want. Um, vitamin C, right? You, you heard of that before. Take your vitamin C. Vitamin C helps destroy histamine. Uh, the way it's made, it's like a big tinker toy, a big ring, and vitamin C will help uh, break down the ring of it, which will help uh, dismember the actual part of the actual histamine molecule. Okay, so that's how it lowers the blood levels of histamine. They had a, a couple of studies uh, done. So two grams of ascorbic acid, uh, it lowered histamine levels by 38 to 40 percent. And the good thing to know is that four hours later, they were still reduced by that amount. That amount. It wasn't just a, a quick response and the histamines went back up. So vitamin C is one of the antioxidants that we'd like to, to have in the body. Uh, bioflavonoids, right? Bioflavonoids kind of cross over into the, in the antioxidants. There's a couple of them, like we just talked about, quercetin, DHQ, it's a dihydroquercetin, and then rutin. They're all active bioflavonoids um, that help modulate that immune response. These kind of work synergistically with each other synergistically with each other, um, just reducing some of the oxidation and inflammation from the hyperimmune response. Okay, how do they do that? That's back to this guy right here. Um, mast cells, whenever they release their armies, they, it's called granulation, so it kind of it kind of inhibits the way that the mast cell uh, granulates the stuff. Granulations are the things that get expressed out. That's where you get big pockets of histamines and, and a bunch of other stuff too here. So basically, this is going to help prevent the uh, bioflavonoids will help prevent some of those histamines being released from the mast cell. N-acetylcysteine, right? Good old amino acid. Um, and it is the precursor to glutathione. Glutathione in the liver, we're going to come to that back in a second, but glutathione in the liver will actually, that is your number one antioxidant in the liver. Now, you can't just take glutathione by itself because just the way it reacts with everything down there. So your body, you have to give it the precursor to it. So N-acetylcysteine is the next, uh, the next step after endocytocysteine is glutathione. So if we can give you some endocytocysteine, your body and the liver can turn that to glutathione and glutathione can, can zap stuff. Um, it's also, an, uh, endocytocysteine is a natural mucolytic, which means it'll help break down mucus. Uh, rutin, it's one of the naturally occurring flavonoids. Uh, this is gonna help re reduce capillary permeability that we talked about when you have this, it means it makes the the ends of the capillary is more permeable, so the more white blood cells can get through, which helps kind of puff you up and get more inflammation. So root is going to help reduce some of that. So it's also going to help reduce that runny nose. And there's an herb in here called stinging nettle, right? Good, good name of it. Uh, kind of the same thing. It works in that mast cell degranulation, helps reduce that, um, and helps just back down the whole histamine uh, uh, cascade. Bromelain is an enzyme that comes from pineapples, um, and enzymes help break things down. This one, hypersensitive immune reactions, uh, approved status by the German Commission on E. So German Commission E, they wrote this big book, and it's, it's like the Bible for all things that have to do with, with herbs. So if they've got the approval from them, that's a, that's a, that's a big, uh, big plus. So, and it also helps out um, absorb quercetin. Which is one of those bioflavonoids. This is one of those synergistic things. Uh, bum, 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 bum. And so what happens is the, everything I just mentioned there, all those little products um, are in a cute little product called Aller DHQ. And you may not be able to see that from where you're at, but it's got vitamin C, the quercetin, and the stinging nettles, the bromelain, rutin, and the cysteine, and the DHQ, right? So uh, that stuff, you can take it all at once to help reduce your, your histamine load and histamine levels, right? That's just one of the companies we use uh, a company called Zymogen. Uh, we can definitely help order that for you. Another company we like to use, one of the oldest vitamin companies in the in the world, Standard Process. They have another one. Uh, they have one called Antronex and Allerplex. Uh, love these guys as well. Uh, the way I, I tend to look at it, this one, these tend to go <clears throat> through the liver. 
a little better. Um, what happens is if you have an increase of anything, whether it's hormones or histamines or things like that, your liver usually clears the, it's like a filter for the body. So your liver, whatever's in excess, your liver will usually uh, uh, filter out. And there's five different processes the way the liver detoxes the body. So um, this one's gonna give you all the precursors to help knock out your uh, uh, the histamine complex with a little help for the liver. These tend to go a little bit more liver first and then a little bit of help for the, for the histamine response, right? They're both doing the same thing. One's going more liver-wise, one's going more uh, histamine-wise. Uh, if it gets into where it turns into more of an infection, such as like the sinus cavity, um, throat, and, and bronchitis type stuff, you need a little bit extra help on that. Um, da -da -da. We have a couple little things here, sinus relief and congestion, respiratory relief. These things have a little more, a whole different set of stuff to help knock out the infection portion of it. Like I said, when you're talking about seasonal allergies, most people just get the runny nose and the, the runny eyes and just, you know, it just makes you makes you feel bad, right? Everything's running, you're always blowing your nose and sneezing. Um, and whereas if you get actual sickness, where you get antibiotic, or where you get the, uh, uh, what do you call it, the infection portion, you gotta put something right where the infection's at, right? Whether you go to your uh, medical doctor and they give you antibiotics, or um, the best way to do it is to have some drops. You gotta put drops right where the infection is, whether it's in the sinus cavity, throat, uh, even there's, there's certain breathing treatments you can do and stuff like that. So. Not trying to not trying to get into anybody else's uh, feedback here. So, no, if you're you know if you're sick or you think you have an infection, then go the the medical route. But if you think you just have the seasonal allergies, these things these things will definitely help right here. We'd love to help you out uh, with that. We can uh, we can ship it to you. You can come pick it up. Especially, I don't know where you're at now. It's March of 2020. We got all the, the good old fashioned coronavirus going on, so nobody's uh, <laughs> nobody's nobody's wanting to get out right with all the. Uh, stay at home stuff so we can definitely send that to you if you have questions about it you can call us email us we'd love to help out um, we appreciate you watching everything from us here and everybody stay healthy out there